Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing the power of prayer. If there is no prayer, there will be no power to overcome the things that may be going on in your life or a ministry. Friends, the number one thing you need to look for, because so many of you, which is a good thing, you seek fellowship with other sincere believers. But let us understand that the book of Acts alone shares with us, gives us insight that the early church, they were going from house to house, breaking bread and praying. They were praying, friends. They were constantly huddling together and they were seeking God. And this is one of the number one things you will find that most organized church groups, they do lack, and that is prayer. It is just a little dab of do you, someone that's assigned to go up to the podium and do, quote, an opening rehearsed prayer. And this is where competitiveness and many people have become shamed because these are performers that they have assigned because they're good speakers. So they open up with, quote, prayer. That's not how the early church did it, my friends. And I can assure you from my own experience, when you huddle with sincere seekers of God, our focus is on prayer. It's on talking to God. You will be amazed at how the gifts of the Spirit begin to start manifesting when people are freely able to pray one for another. And usually, beloved, it's one at a time. And we agree. This is what I have seen many days in my journey with Jesus. The Holy Spirit starts speaking. Now, the scriptures tell us that they were in a prayer, a time of prayer, when the Holy Spirit said, separate Paul and Silas for the work of the ministry. So the Holy Spirit, friends, if you want to to experience the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, you need to ask God to set you up, to to join you, to cause you to come in the midst of those who can pray with you. Now understand, beloved, the earmark of a false church or group or fellowship is the lack of prayer. Many people fuss about the fact that prayer was taken out of schools, but let me help you, friends. Prayer was removed from the organized churches. Pay close attention. Jesus said, my father's house shall be a house of prayer. And many people have been intimidated by the eloquence of speech of those that most false church groups assign the prayer, quote, warriors, no friends. You must understand, we pray without ceasing. We pray one for another. I thank God for our prayer intercessors that's on our team here at Motivating You to Win. And they are positioned all over America. And we have one or two outside of the United States. These beloved precious saints are sincere about talking to God on the behalf of others. And trust me, friends, prayer is everything for my life. I constantly commune with God. It's not something that I wait to do when I wake up and sit on the floor. You are constantly in prayer in your heart, communing with God, talking with God. I will never forget as I close this exhortation, I was given an opportunity in my wilderness to work for a church as their secretary. And listen, friends, I could not believe it. Two things that stood out about this, quote, organized church group. Number one, they did not at all have prayer. I was like, what in what? What is this? And I remember asking the pastor, I said, listen, now, remember, I'm only the secretary. I'm not fellowshipping there, but I'm peeking in. You know, I'm checking them out. 
And I'm like, wow, these people don't pray. So I asked the pastor, how do you feel about if I'm willing to coordinate it for you, if we start a prayer group at 12 o'clock noon, because they had a lot of retired people, a lot of seniors who had nothing else to do, <laughs> and they would call the office. They, they didn't have a lot going on. I'm like, look, let's rally the people and have noonday prayer twice a week. Let's start just two days. You know what the pastor said? Oh, no, they wouldn't be interested in that. We can't get the people to do anything around here. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute. It's not that they are not interested. You never even gave him an opportunity. He shut it down. The Holy Spirit said, he's not interested. Let us ponder these things. Beloved, prayer is the most precious opportunity we have been given through the shed blood of Jesus to first repent of our sin and have this amazing opportunity to come to God with our petition, as the scriptures say, all types of prayers, supplicating, giving thanks and honor, and speaking on others' behalf. Friends, you, you won't have power without prayer. And without it being in the midst of a fellowship where people are free to speak up and speak out as the Spirit gives them utterance to, to bring forth words of wisdom, words of knowledge, miracles, all of these gifts, friends, I have seen it. They are very much strong when you have a group of true followers huddling, praying in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my friends. No prayer, no power. Be watchful. Is where you fellowship really a house of prayer? Till next time, my friends, God bless.